like kind of metal intro we tried. to the uh, amazing new really lady. Did. I can't really metal, can I? No, you can. I thought that was that was quite metal. My metal monkey. Yeah. <laughs> it's like dad metal. It's the end of our shooting day, <laughs> and we've saved the angry amplification units for last, haven't we? We did. Forged in the Black Country. The Black Country. Which, if you're in America, is the sort of Midlands of England, basically. Yeah. Um, well, they have a funny accent, don't they? I'm not which even going to try and do it. No, no, I can't do it. Rubio will not demonstrate. Oh, it's mice. <laughs> So, Think of the Beatles. just picture everybody, one of these amplifiers is made by someone that speaks like that. Yes. So, but no, so the black current, Laney got a big heritage in high gain amplifiers. I know over the years, you know, guys like Tony Iommi have been big fans of these amplifiers. Um, and Ironheart is a new range for 2012 of targeted high gain metal amplifiers. And they're affordable. And affordable, yes. So, uh, this stuff is uh, Far Eastern made. But it's quality Far Eastern stuff, I must admit, all the handles and the covering and everything looks good. So, we've got two amplifiers with us today, they're both the 60 watt, so the 60 watt 212 combo and the 60 watt head running into a 212 cab. There is, if this isn't fierce enough for you, a 120 watt one, which we'll probably video another day. I can't ever imagine a situation where you'd need a 120 watt head. Well, you never know. Although, I you suppose, yeah. So anyway, it uh, comes with a uber cool foot switch that I'm going to try and use now oh, to guide again, you through. That, guide you through the sort of sounds and channels and everything that you can get here. So, we're going to start off and probably only stay here for about a quarter of a second doing the clean sound. There you go. And the <laughs> next channel. <laughs> so, so, let's try clean. Yes, clean channel. There's a perfectly good clean sound for the two second intros that you guys do before you go into a death metal tune. <laughs> uh, it's got a digital reverb, so that's why it's kind of sounding quite nice and clean. Uh, and just to, to, to tell you that these are powered by 6L6 tubes um, in the power station. It's got that classic kind of American open big kind of gainy sound. Um, next is the rhythm channel, which uh, has its own EQ to separate to the lead channel, its own gain setting, uh, and somewhat confusingly, we thought. Well, let's just say we did say we should say it took us a while to get to grips with the way this is set up. We had to do the unman thing, didn't we? Had we? To look at a manual. We had to look at the manual. So I had to look at the manual because I assumed that if both lights were on, that would mean the rhythm channel is working. But really, However, it was kind of keeping the clean channel in reserve, wasn't it? Yeah. What happens is both lights are off. Is the rhythm channel. And when both lights are on, it's the lead channel, and it just kind of indicates that when you turn the lead channel off, it's going to go to the clean sound rather than back to the rhythm sound. Maybe it'll make more sense if I just do it. So let's go to the rhythm sound. Sabbath or something. Okay, so now we're going to go to the lead channel, which has its own, again, EQ and its own gain setting and everything, so here we go. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the lead
singing lead sound. It's not at all fizzy, is it? No, it's, it's a good. nice change from a high gain amplifier. Yeah. It's saturated and smooth. It can sustain for a long time, but there's no fizz. Maybe, maybe now would be a good time for me to just say how I think we've dialed this in without too much fizz. So what I've done, uh, hopefully you can see that the panel here is I'm not really diming the gain sound heavily on any of the channels here. On the rhythm channel, we had it up at number six to seven and lead channel sort of seven to eight. So fairly high, but not maxed out. I'm trying to open the amp up. We found that with, in fact, there's a couple of features over down this end that I'll tell you about. It'll make clear what I'm sort of saying. There is a, a watt controller, a watts what? control. What? What? Um, and that enables me to, to just limit how much output can come out the amplifier. So all the way up, we'll get the full 60 watts and all the way off, we'll just get one watt. Now I tend to find that if you give the amp its maximum headroom, it allows the amp to sort of be expansive and dynamic. If you tell the amp, if you limit the headroom and push it hard, that's where I find amps sort of start to go spongy and fuzzy. Some people like that. And at the end of the day, you know, everything's subjective. So you, you just decide what you like. But I, I've dimed this all, uh, given it the amp pretty much maximum headroom. We, we made it tight, didn't we? And then, yeah, the other cool control, Dynamics, which is like a sag control. So the more you turn it up, the looser the, the amp becomes in the way it plays, and then the more you turn it down, the tighter the amp becomes. And I said to I said to Rob, do you want a tight bottom or a loose bottom? And um, I went for a tight bottom. Yeah, Rob, which to be honest, I think most of us probably would go for. But you know, hey, it's all subjective. It glows red. It does glow red. And you know what's good about that? It's kind of cool. In a dark venue, I think it would throw enough light onto the controls that you can see what you're doing. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that's part of the reason they did it. I'm sure the other part is just because it looks badass. It looks badass. Um, so that's kind of cool. So to get our kind of non-fizzy sound, we've got the, the wattage control all the way up, the dynamics control all the way down, tone and reverb are set about halfway. Most of the EQ controls, what have I done here? I haven't done an awful lot with the EQ. They're all relatively flat, or if they are, they're maybe just one or two points off. All the EQ controls on this amplifier can be pulled out to kind of give the uh, tone controller a different character. Uh, so it's quite a versatile amplifier. Mm. Um, we actually, again, like with a lot of amplifiers that I try, I tend to find actually leaving the EQ roughly where the manufacturer kind of designed it to be. It's usually. where they've spent a little time in R&D yeah, making it, it sound down. good. But it's there if you want to mess around. Um, and then the last button on my foot switch is a boost control. Boost. Not just volume though, but also saturation, gain, and goodness. Yes, it's 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 um, an extra level of gain on the front end of the amplifier, so simulates using a kicking in a, a pedal. So you can kick the boost in on any of the three channels. This is what the the boost uh, sounds like on the clean channel. <laughs> I think the reason you're hearing the most dramatic volume uh, boost on the clean sound is because if I kick that in on a, on a sound that's already quite saturated, a boost control generally just makes it more saturated. So if I engage the, the rhythm channel and, and hit the boost in, you'll hear a fattening of the sound, but not much of a level boost. So here we go, this is the rhythm sound. And if I do the lead sound, basically the same thing again. So big thick lead It's, it's a really good little good. amp, isn't it? it? It does one thing specifically very well. It's got that kind of thump. You can really yeah. feel it in your body. If you, this is a metal amplifier for, a, for yeah. people that have a budget, and it's genius. Yeah, I mean, does. did we? I think we said the price, did we? You can pick the 60 watt head up, which is this one here for 549, um, and pair it up with either the 212 here, which is 199, or they do a 412, which I can't remember how much it is. Sorry, you have to go to Anderson's and find out. But I expect it's good value as well. Um, 199 for that little. 
two-tone. Yeah, it's, it's uh, really, and I'll tell you what, it's light too. The, yeah, they got some cabs in there by a brand called H and H, who were a big British kind of brand back in the sort of seventies. Made a lot of PA and guitar amps and stuff. Very cool. And Laney bought that brand a couple of years ago, I think. So they're they're using some of the old driver technology, or they're developing new driver technology underneath that brand name. But that's what's in the cab, um, and the combo. Uh, would cost you six forty nine. So, and that's a two twelve loaded, same speakers, um, same features and everything as this, but for six forty nine. So, again, very competitive. If you're looking at, you know, new Marshall DSL range, Black Star HT range, um, some Something. of the orange type mm. product, you know, it's it's very very competitive, but very targeted. I, I don't think this is this is not a it's not know, this is not a, a, a an amp that you would go and think, yeah, I'll, I'm in a covers band, so. That'll be handy. This is a, right. I'm playing metal. Yeah, give it, it to is. Now. If you're a metal player, this is a really good choice. So I think what we should do so that you can see the difference between a passive loaded pick guitar and an active loaded guitar is I'll get a killer sound for Rob out of this, a killer sound for a beer out of that. Rob will use that, Rabir will use that. They can shred off and you guys can see what you like. So I'm signing out for now, but enjoy the rest of this video. <laughs> <laughs>
while I'm using, which camera am I talking about? Three cameras. <laughs> I've, um, my wonderful tech, Pablo, who you'll have seen from the Door J and the Drills Tour, um, who looked after us all, I gave him one of my original stock ML2s, and I gave him an absolutely ridiculous uh, concept, which was the Mammoth Fret. And the Mammoth Fret contains the most enormous fret wire you've ever seen on Earth. What, what size is it, Pabs? Oh, God, it's huge. It's bigger than base fret wire. Yeah. It's uh, it's ridiculous, and the concept was to, to kind of almost make a scallop guitar, but without taking wood away. So you keep the woody tones, and funnily enough, it's it's balanced perfectly. There's no um, there's no weight head to it, and we've also put some bare knuckles in it. We got some Miracle Man humbuckers, and it's just it's just an astoundingly different sounding guitar. And I just thought I'd get out and stick it through these dirty laneys. Mm -hmm. 